Good morning, everyone. My name is Margarida Figueiredo, and I want to start by expressing my gratitude for your presence here today. Today, I'll be presenting my dissertation titled The Effect of Football Sports Performance on Football Club Stocks, the Portuguese Context. Before I begin my presentation, I'd like to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude to everyone who helped me through this process. I am particularly thankful to my supervisor, Professor Afshin, for his invaluable guidance and support throughout my master thesis journey. I now present to you the agenda outlining the topics to be covered in this presentation. In brief, the topics I will go through mirror those in the dissertation. We'll start with the why of the study, which addresses the motivation. We then move on to the how, which is the research method. And finally, we'll discuss the what, which includes the results, limitations and directions for future research. Let's start by addressing the why of this study. Football is one of the most famous sports in the world and thus receives wild world attention. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in investigating the relationship between sports performance and financial markets, given the rapid growth in sports revenue. With the top 20 clubs in the world doubling their revenue in 10 years to 9.2 billion euros in 2021-2022. Moreover, private equity investment has been attracted to the football industry, even focusing on smaller teams and leagues. Also, as you can see on the graph, there has been an increase in papers on this topic, which enhances its importance. Let's now discuss the positive aspects of this study and the novelties it presents compared to other studies, which enables it to contribute to the literature. After conducting a systematic literature review, it is evident that while the existing literature has explored the impact of football clubs' performance on stock prices across various countries and sports, there are still unexplored, unexplored areas, particularly concerning Portuguese football clubs, both on their aggregate analysis, but also as a comparison between individual clubs. Taking these factors in consideration, the study aims to contribute to the literature with three points besides the scope spoken in the aforementioned gaps. First, to provide an extensive overview of the literature on the impact of football performance and stock prices in the Portuguese context. Second, to be the largest dataset ever used to study Portuguese clubs. And third, the introduction of a variable that was never studied before to the best of our knowledge, which is a COVID variable which compares the period before COVID-19 and during COVID-19. Thus, following the conducted literature review and the mentioned research gap, the main goal of our study is to answer the following question. That is, what is the impact of football match results on the stock prices of the four major Portuguese football clubs? Sport Lisboa e Benfica, Football Club do Porto, Sporting Club de Portugal and Sporting Club de Braga. Also, the four follow-up questions that were selected to be answered were the following. 1. If there is an impact, it is different across the four clubs. 2. How do the results in European competitions compare to domestic competitions in terms of their impact on average and normal returns of stocks? Third, is there a correlation between the goal difference in a match and its impact on stock prices? And fourth, lastly, are there differences in the effect of sporting results on the stocks of football clubs between, between the pre-COVID-19 period and also during the pandemic? Having established the focus of our study, let's now discuss how we plan to approach it. Two different types of data were used on this study, match data and stock price data. Match data was web scrapped from the website 00 using Python in Google Colab for the four clubs. The relevant match data variables, if extracted, allow to create the variables that are important for the study as the result, if it's a victory, a tie or a defeat, if it is a national or an international match, the game goal difference and if it, the match was during COVID or before COVID. 
On the other hand, the stock price information was extracted from data stream and completed with Yahoo Finance for the four clubs and also for the Portuguese market index, the PSI20. After collecting the data, descriptive statistical techniques were applied to both datasets to address outliers and missing values and to enhance variable comprehension. So, there are five initial datasets, one for each club and one for the aggregate of the clubs, that was used to give insight of the Portuguese context as a whole. The sample information is presented in the following table, and it is worth highlighting the 3,249 matches used for the aggregate sample, which is the largest to the best of our knowledge. The time frame selected for each club varies due to the different dates of entry into the stock market, and the aggregate club was the 2007-2008 season, since it is the season of the last club started being quoted. The methodology used for this work was the event study, replicating the previous work of Ben Crime. The advantage of using an event study is that it allows us to analyze the immediate impact of an event on asset prices in a rational market and to quantify the economic impact of the event using asset price data observed over a relatively short period of time. The event study was conducted following the structure of Campbell and is illustrated on the slideshow. The defined event, in this case, was the day of each match and the event window the day after the match, since it is the most suitable to minimize the risk of information distortion from concurrent events that may be unrelated to the outcome. The estimation window was decided to be of 250 days and it includes other events, which is usually not recommended, but due to the frequent occurrence of football matches, it becomes really challenging to exclude their influence on the returns. And thus, uh, it, they were included following uh, the studies of other authors, such as Brown and Hartzell and Schultons and Pester. Moving on to the selection criteria, the four teams were chosen based on stock price data availability, which implies being quoted on Euronext Lisbon. The time horizon was also selected based on their initial quote dates. The main goal of the event study is to find the abnormal average returns, which are returns that cannot be explained by market factors, but may be potentially linked to the events under examination, in this case, the football matches. To achieve the stated objective, it is necessary to calculate two additional returns, the normal returns and also the actual returns. To estimate the AAR, the market model was applied using an ordinary least squares regression. Furthermore, to ensure the robustness and validity of the findings obtained through the event study methodology, three non-parametric robustness tests are employed. The sign test, the single sample Wilcoxon sign rank test, and the Wilcoxon rank sum test. Those tests were, show, were chosen in the treatment than parametric ones due to previous works uh, that indicated that football games have a non-normal distribution. The AAR and the tests were conducted in our language using our studio. Let's now proceed to examine the results we were able to obtain. We distinguish the results that were statistically significant when employing the test from the results obtained by the average of normal returns, but not found to be statistically significant when applying the tests. Firstly, the fits or ties lead to lower returns for Portuguese football clubs on the day following their matches and are more pronounced for SLB, supporting previous findings. Asymmetric returns were also found with victories leading to lower increases followed by ties and defeats. Only for SCP this order is different with ties having a higher impact than the other two match outcomes. For the second research question, the only statistically relevant finding was that FCP victories have a greater effect on its stock prices in international competitions compared to national ones. For the rest of the clubs, 
national victories caused a higher effect on stock prices than international ones. Furthermore, our study found evidence that international defeats are more prejudicial for club stocks than national defeats, although the returns for all clubs following defeats were not significant, suggesting that there may be not be a casual effect and could be coincidental. For the third research question, when considering only the average of normal returns and the sample with all clubs, it provides us evidence that defeats with a significant gold difference strongly influence stock prices. However, those results do not apply to Braga and Benfica, where there is evidence of moderate defeats having a greater impact on their stock prices. Lastly, for victories, the evidence points to matches with more than three goals having a higher positive effect on the market perception. This uh, underscores that might be relevant for short-term investors to consider the day after a victory a good time to sell Portuguese club stocks. And lastly, for the COVID hypothesis, there is evidence that during COVID-19, the fixed effect affected less uh, sporting stock prices. In addition, evidence based on abnormal returns results show that during the COVID-19, there was a noticeable shift in the impact of match results and stock on stock prices. Specifically, victories influenced more stock prices during the pandemic, with an exception for Benfica. Furthermore, defeats decreased their negative ex eff effects during COVID, except for Porto. And finally, ties had a positive effect on stocks for uh, sporting and for the sample of the aggregate clubs and decrease their negative impact for Porto and Benfica. Uh, in general, this implies that markets were less sensitive to defeats uh, and draws during the pandemic, but uh, increased sensitivity for victories during this period. When examining the results we've achieved, it's crucial to always consider the constraints this study faces, which, in certain instances, could pave the way for further research. So, our, our first limitation is the exclusion of variables like management decisions or sponsorship deals, which could significantly impact stock prices. Uh, in future research, incorporating these additional variables could provide a more uh, rounded and profound analysis. Another limitation is our sample size, our club sample size. We study four clubs, uh, but there are 18 clubs in the Portuguese First League alone. Uh, this ra can raise a little bit of concern about the generability of our findings. Uh, so, expanding the study to include uh, more clubs uh, would bolster the robustness of our finding and offer a more compre comprehensive perspective, although this is difficult due to the fact that the other clubs are not quoted um, on Euronext Lisbon. Uh, furthermore, our focus on the COVID-19 pandemic uh, impact, while insightful, is limited in scope. We haven't, uh, we haven't explored this across the border range of clubs in Europe and more extensively study on the COVID-19 across various European clubs could be highly informative. Uh, and also, analyzing the post-pandemic period uh, could, might also be relevant in reveal long-term impacts on the football stock market. Uh, lastly, we've concentrated on the price response of club sh shares, but not on the volume of shares traded. Understanding both perspectives is essentially to fully grasp, grasp market reactions. Future studies should look uh, at share volume fluctuations alongside price responses. This would provide a more detailed view of investor behavior in response to football club performance and events. And to conclude, while our study has provided verbal insights, uh, this limitation highlights the need for broader and more comprehensive research in this area. Addressing these limitations will deepen our understanding of the dynamics at play in the football stock market. Thank you for your attention.